These are the 10 biggest mistakes golfers make around the green. I'm going to show you how to correct them. Number one is trying to pitch the ball at the hole, potentially anticipating that there's going to be a lot of spin and the ball's going to stop. Now, a lot of people will come, and especially newer players, high handicappers, and feel like they have to chip this all the way at the cup. But now what happens when you chip it at the cup, it rolls out. What we have to do is read it like a putt. And the best way you can take advantage of this is to use something with lower loft. Because when you're using the high lofted club to pitch it as far as you can, you don't know how it's going to spin. One's going to stop, one's going to bound. So we go with something lower loft. Instead of a sand wedge, we go with a pitching wedge. It's a much simpler shot because you have a lot of room for error where you can make a small error and it's still a good shot. But if you chunk that, it's going to stop here. If you catch it too good, it's going to keep bounding on. Whereas this, you can thin it a little bit, you cannot catch all of it, miss your landing spot, and still be pretty good. So you see how it rolls out like a putt, and you see the break. You have to read that break. Flying something all the way to the hole leaves you with something like a 15 or 20 foot putt, when something lower loft can put you within five or six feet to get more up and downs. Humongous mistake people are making is they go get short-sided like this. They're on the other side of a bunker, hitting onto a green on a down slope, pin is tucked close to the edge, trying to get cute. Don't get cute. Getting cute is the enemy of good scores. Lemonade skill, champagne expectations. Let's go with the lemonade shot, guillotine, get it on the green, Italian word. Take enough swing to get this ball anywhere on the green for a putt. We don't want a fried egg lie in the bunker. That's on the green. Next one anywhere on the green. Absolutely perfect. We've got a probably a 15, 16 footer and a 20 footer over there. But we're not in, a, in the bunker taking a fried egg lie, another four shots to get up and down. Humongous mistake, misunderstanding the bunker shot. A lot of people want to chip it out. Can work sometimes, works two out of 10 times, eight out of 10 times, teething it into the wall, seven shots to get out, score, destroyer. Next one people do, decelerating. Getting scared, getting puffies. Why? They don't practice. And what don't they practice, Maddie Boom Boom? What they don't practice is the understanding that you do not touch the ball. There is no touching a golf ball in the greenside bunker. That is key. If you can understand that, you've got bunkers. Then, how do we hit the ball to an inch behind the ball? You slap the bottom of the sole of your club with basically with your right hand onto the sand behind the ball. You're not digging in unless you have very hard, hard turf. Let's show you a hard turf one. On a hard turf one, it's the same concept, but we're going to do this one first. You keep everything square, middle of the stance, an inch behind the ball, but this time you're not using the sole. You're using the leading edge. And the ball comes out real tasteful, okay? That's for firm. That's three feet. Now, if you have fluffier sand like this, this is where you slap the sand with the sole. Doesn't matter your lie, you don't hit the ball with the club. So you're hitting, let's say, an inch behind the ball with the sole of the club. What it does is it comes in, it bounces off the turf, but as it bounces, it takes some sand and the ball comes out on a magic carpet ride. So slap the sand. Okay, we'll do another two. This one from the firm turf, same thing, right? Not hitting the ball. We are not hitting the golf ball. We are hitting the sand behind the ball. Firm turf, square face, middle of the stance, not open face. Wow, that's two, no, five feet. I actually surprised myself there, that was really good. On the softer sand, you open the face, not with your wrists, but you open it and grip it while it's open. To an inch behind the ball, just like off firm turf, except this time you're using that bounce, the sole. How to get good at this before hitting a shot? If you do it on the course, people will say they want to penalize you. They can go suck an ass. Just take a couple practice swings. Get to the greenside bunker at your course. No ball. Just practice slapping the sand. Move to your ball. Slap the sand. Get the ball out like a freaking veteran. Humongous mistake is, is this range. One, two, three feet. 
in this range, a lot of people will just come and scoop this up, two footer, uh, uh, and then when you get to a Saturday competition, you get to a Saturday competition, now you have this little knee knocker to save your bogey. You don't know how to do it because you don't hold them. It's, it's a real thing. If you have no memory of doing them and you keep doing that, all you have is a memory of missing them. So be more mindful of them and just hold them out at least for a few rounds so that you get the feeling of it. If you don't have that feeling, you don't hear the sound, the terminal sound of every hole is hearing the ball in the bottom of the cup. The holes don't really end and you have a poor memory of the ball never hitting the bottom of the cup, the most addictive sound in golf. So always take them very seriously, get aligned, otherwise these become the ones where you get the yips. You get like tremble, what the hell am I doing? Pick a line and make it hit the back of the cup, get that sound. Big mistake people are making and these three foot putts, how many shots around are you wasting on that? Get good at them, how? Matty Boom Boom, wise ass, you're always telling us be good at these putts inside three feet. You know what? This is the only way. You can practice long putting to a tee in the ground. That's your long putting done. Don't practice to holes for long putts because you're gonna miss them. Practicing, missing putts. Practice your short putts. Never leave outside one foot from the hole. One foot putts, a hundred in a row. A hundred in a row. Why? Because the more you putt these, the more you're gonna start seeing a line. You're gonna learn how to get a ball started on the line. A one foot putt is a two foot putt, is a three foot putt, is a 10 foot putt. Start with one foot, do a hundred in a row. Believe me, scores dropping like panties. A humongous mistake is not reading the lie of the ball. This is a bit more of an advanced technique, but this is where practice comes in and you start to understand and be more mindful of how your club is going with the surface of the ground, whether it's grass, whether it's sandy, whether it's fluffy, whether it's wet, whether it's dry. Over here, I'm in a little area of grass where the club might get caught in the turf. Now, that's what practice strokes are for, to feel out the turf. Biggest tip I can give you to overcome this is to practice interaction with the turf. Start to feel what feels good. Start at a, a square club face. Okay, does it get caught? Open it a little bit. Oh, does it skim? Now it skims. So instead of just trying to clip it all the time, maybe open that face a little bit and maybe it just skims through the grass a little better. Instead of getting caught and causing a yip. Most people don't look at the, ho the ball while it's rolling on a chip to get an indication of the break on the green. It's very valuable information. Let's say we hit the ball past the cup here on this downhill chip. Okay, a little bit hot. Okay, now watch it. Which way is that gone? It's gone that way. From us right to left, from the other side left to right, and now we have some intel and an idea of which way it's going to break before we get to the putt. 